Hi, my name is Tamar Shea Walker. Welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is doing great today. I want to have a conversation about abortion, kind of from a, my opinion and from a Christian perspective, me being a Christian. When it comes to abortion, a lot of times you hear Christians as being pro-life, meaning that they feel that people shouldn't have abortion because it's murder. They're killing, you know, babies. I feel, I'm going to kind of explain my, my feeling and my take on this. As a Christian, based on the information I got from the Bible, as soon as a sperm and an egg comes together, that is life. Sometimes the life do not hold and there's a miscarriage. Sometimes the life comes full term and there's a baby. But life starts in the womb as soon as a sperm and an egg connects and the human life starts to develop and grow. Because if you think about it, even from a scientific, scientific perspective, when some women can't have kids, what they do is take the egg and the sperm and then they put them together outside of the womb in the lab. As soon as those two forms come together and they see that they're going to continue and they go tell the mother, they don't tell the mother, oh, there's a blob. They say, hey, we have, we have life. You know, you, that might be your son or that might be your daughter. She's going to get excited at the fact that the sperm and this egg came together, they joined together, and they can see life starting to grow and develop. And like I said, this is even just looking at it from a scientific perspective. So the argument of some people, especially the ones that are pro-life, I'm sorry, pro-choice, they love saying that it's not life, it's just a blob, it's, it's just a blip, it's not life. I don't agree with that, that's not true. Like I said, I feel that I, I believe in pro-choice and the reason I believe in pro-choice is because God gave us that choice. If you go back to the beginning of the Bible, God being all-knowing, God being, I can't even say the word, omnipotent. So he's in the past, present, and the future at the same time. So when he was there with Adam and Eve, the only thing they can do to sin against him was to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That was the only thing that God put in the garden that was considered a sin, that was considered evil, that was considered something they should not partake in. When, it, when the snake came into the garden, God was there. He said nothing. When they had the conversation, the snake and Eve, God was there. God said nothing. When she took the fruit and ate it, God was there. He said nothing. When she offered it to Adam, God was there. He said nothing because he did not want to take their choice away from them. He showed up again as if he didn't know anything, as if nothing happened. And he gave them the opportunity to kind of explain what happened. The first thing Adam did, being the male, being the head of the garden, is he didn't take responsibility for his action. The first thing he did was blame Eve, saying it's this woman, and then blame God that you gave me. He forgot the point that he asked for her. And he got what he asked for. And so if he would have been responsible to take care of what God gave him, that probably would have never went down. But that's a whole nother story. And a lot of times women are putting, you know, it's like a woman cannot get pregnant to even have the thought of having an abortion unless the man is there. So if men start taking responsibility and being men by saying, okay, I'm not going to get this person pregnant unless I want to have a child from them. I understand accident happened, but still, at some point in time, a man has to stand up and be a man and stop leaving all these decision, decisions up to women. And especially as women, we need to stop vilifying women who choose whatever they choose, if they choose to have the baby, if they choose not to have the baby. Stop vilifying these women because you don't know their situation. You don't know why they're making that decision. You may have never been in that, that situation when you had to even consider an abortion, you should find yourself blessed that it, if that never had to even enter your mind, 
Some women get raped and they might not want to have carried for nine months the baby of the man that raped them. Some women are molested by their father, son, uncle, brother, cousin, whoever it may be. And they are minor. They got their whole life ahead of them and they might not want to walk around carrying, carrying that child. Um, my, my grandmother, who I never met, she got pregnant at 11 through a rape. She carried the baby, you know, my uncle, he, you know, I never met him either, but you know, it's like certain people might be put in a certain position. I don't know the situation back then, if there was an option or did she have to keep the baby, but she didn't stay here. She was here from Orlando, but she had to go out of town to leave the state to have the baby because of shame, because of different things like that. So to sit and judge someone and say, you're wrong, you're right, or whatever the case may be, until you're in that person's situation, you really don't have, have anything to say to them. The only people that needs to be talking to them, if they're a Christian, that the, the decision to make uh, have an abortion is between them and God and whoever else is in their life canceling them. Because you have to understand everybody's um, situation isn't the same. Everybody's decision to do whatever they're deciding to do isn't the same. So whether we're voting to protect the rights of being able to have the abortion or canceling the right to have the abortion, it's not a one size fit all conversation. And so for you to try to tell someone else how to live their life by saying you're wrong if you decide to have an abortion, you don't know that person. You're not the one talking to that person. And then a lot of times on both sides, regardless if they're Christians or not, people lie. Just like I said, when the, the pro-choice um, people, a lot of times they're like, oh, it's not a baby until it's outside, you know, it's not a baby um, until it's outside of the womb, or it's not considered a baby until it has a face, arms, and where did all that come from? If, in order to get outside of the womb, don't you have to start from somewhere? It's not a, a blood clot, it's, it's a life. So it starts in the womb, develop and grow, and then eventually comes out a full grown baby. So you don't get the baby without the, the, the fertilization of an egg and a sperm coming together inside a womb. So it is life. But like I said, I'm not judging anyone. I'm not telling anyone what to do. Like I said, I'm pro-choice because God gave us that choice to choose. It might not be the right choice. It might be the wrong choice, whatever it is, but he gave that um, choice to us. That's why he said, um, I, I put before you the choice of life and death, choose life, you know, but he's given us that choice. He's given us the answer to choose, but at the same time, he's all forgiven. He, he loves you. He's willing to forgive any mistake you make. And I think that's why if you think about it, even if you just read the 10 commandments of things that you should not do, I think the reason that he put those there, not to punish us, but to make us more compassionate towards other people. Because if I'm a man, I can't feel what it is for a woman to say, I, I don't want to carry this baby. And I could be like, oh, you're wrong for that. Or if I, I'm a woman and I've never been put in that position. But if you really look at the Ten Commandments and if you really read everything in the Bible, you fit in there somewhere. A lot of times it's easy to point fingers at someone and say, you shouldn't do that because that is wrong. That is wrong. How many people had, 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 are, are Christians and had an affair? How, how many people did, have done that? You might not have had an abortion, but how many people had, had an affair? How many people covet what they, 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 their neighbor has or someone down the street or someone on Instagram? Oh, I wish I had that. Oh, I wish I had her man. Oh, I wish I had his life. That's coveting. How many people have had sex outside of the marriage in that fornication? God don't see levels of sin. All sins are equal to God. And so therefore, just like Jesus told those people who, who the first one, cast, whoever went out sin, cast the first stone and he and everybody walk away because your sin might not be her sin. Her sin might not be your sin. But believe me, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I got a child, never been married. <laughs> so I already know I'm not perfect. So that's why I'm saying is it is a lot, and the reason I, I want to make it clear that life starts in the womb, that when you make the choice to have an abortion, you are killing the baby. And I'm not doing that to make anyone feel bad. The reason I'm doing that because if you truly believe that you're not killing a life, why would you ever ask God to forgive you for that? So now you're walking around with this guilt 
you may or may not have that guilt, but if you eventually have that guilt, like, oh, I feel like I did something wrong. Did I make the right choice? But if, if everyone is telling you, oh, that wasn't a baby, that wasn't a child, why would you ever ask God to forgive you for killing, you know, or, or aborting a baby, aborting a life? So that's why I want you to understand the truth. It is a child. If you decide to have an abortion, if you decide, you know, one day I want to be forgiven for this, you can be forgiven for that. God will forgive you for it. And you can go and move on. You know, like I said, just repent, confess your sins, and he will forgive you. He loves you. He would never stop loving you. He would never forsake you. He would never be like, oh, because like I said, if that was the case, <laughs> none of us have a chance of getting in heaven. None of us have a chance of God love. That's why we have Jesus, because we all have sin, are sinning, and will continue to sin. So if anyone is standing there pointing fingers, just ask them, okay, let me pull out the Bible. and you. Can, I'm not going to point to it. You just point to the things that you've done wrong. You don't have to tell me about it. Just go through the Bible and kind of point, oh, I did that, I did that, I did that. Then you'll see you're not perfect. So try to work on yourself first before you start condemning other people. That's why I feel that God put those things in place, not to hold, not just to hold us down, but to kind of give us grace when it comes to looking at someone else. Because like I said, you might do something that I don't do. But when I have to look at the things I have done, can I really talk about the things you, you've done? <laughs> no. But I just wanted to put it out there like that. And like I said, it, I'm not for, I'm not against. I feel that you should have a choice because I'm not in your shoes to make that decision. It's up to you. Life starts in the womb. If you ever had consider having or you just feel guilty about whatever, just confess to God. Like I said, he loves you. He will forgive you. And then you can just move forward from there. Thank you. Peace.